So what's in a dashboard? Well, it's a 30,000 foot view, to use the analogy of a plane again, where you're looking down and seeing a lot. You're not going to see an enormous amount of detail um, in this. You're going to see probably in a corporate dashboard between 50 and 30 key numbers, probably on the 30 side for a whole corporation, but closer to 15 or 20 for a department. And we'll, we'll give you a lot of rules about that uh, later or, or guidelines and templates. Um, but these are results and averages. You should not focus on activities, even though you need to capture that information to divide and come up with performance metrics. You don't want to be the dashboard about activities because as your business grows, those line items in the dashboards will become meaningless as they um, get out of context. So it's much better to have a ratio of cost per unit or ratio of customer service people to customers than it is to have how many customer calls in a dashboard. The department manager in the department dashboard should obviously know how many calls that are happening, but the CEO and higher levels up probably would be better served knowing what's the cost per call, what's the ratio of calls that are successful, because people will game the system if you tell them to generate more calls and they won't resolve the customer complaint as well because they'll think their bonus and their results are based on that one metric. So that's what I mean when I say you have to have balance of the four key time kinds of numbers. Most companies only do two and that's why their dashboard implementations fail. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Um, so ratios is very key. Um, the idea that some standard numbers should be in there are true. I, I like to have in every dashboard, for instance, the revenue per employee. That's a, a good number to, to have in every corporate dashboard. Obviously, you're going to have the financial statements and you'll have the revenue because you'll need to calculate in the dashboard some of these ratios off that financial data. Just don't let a dashboard be financially driven. It's more important than that and it's broader than that. So metrics which encourage constant and never-ending improvement like productivity and quality metrics are key to balance that dashboard out so that employees and others don't game the system. You should also integrate dashboards with your budgets and we have system four of airtight management is strategic budgeting which really turns the standard budget driven by uh, the accounting department on its ear because it values innovation and risk and those kinds of trade-offs as opposed to just being a cost-driven budgeting process. So that's why all of these six systems are integrated and when they're all there, that's where we get the name airtight. You've got an airtight self-correcting system uh, from all the six systems. Um, MBOs is short for management by objective, which was invented by Peter Drucker. You definitely want to watch that module because dashboards do not stand alone. You have to have management philosophies and you have to have foundational principles in management and leadership as well as a cadence of meetings that we'll talk about later which is not a lot of overhead to, to, to leverage a dashboard once it's in place. You should also think about how you use the dashboard metrics in combination to uh, measure and create bonuses and that sort of thing. Um, so the right dashboard metrics allow uh, not just a review of recent history, but also looking into the future via extrapolation, spotting of the good and bad trends. Um, you know, when you're reviewing the history, it's, it's easy to notice anomalies if you have those ratios. With extrapolation, what you're trying to do is you're seeing into the future so that you can predict in advance things that need to be done and have more time to do them, which means you'll get a better quality product, whether it's hiring people or, or working on a new product. Um, spotting of good and bad trends where advanced indicators are just priceless strategically. Uh, and then you can also, you know, what, what kind um, of dashboards are there? Well, we already mentioned there's company dashboards, department dashboards, division dashboards, and significant project or complex dashboards. Obviously the corporate dashboard is at 30,000 feet. When you go down to a department or division dashboard, you're kind of in that analogy at 20,000 feet. So you're seeing more granularity, you're seeing more detail, only the top level numbers are rolling up into the corporate dashboard. And then as I said, a dashboard can be created for very important processes if they're strategic um, to the business. 
So a key goal of dashboards that most people don't understand, and this is why dashboard implementations fail all the time, is to do what's called moving tasks from MBO to MBE. Remember, management by objective is a very specific process of goal setting invented by Peter Drucker in the 60s, which has been shown to improve businesses' value creation by 56%. Now think of that 56% compounding annually. That's the difference between being a leader in your marketplace and an also-ran company. So you must do MBO to be a competitive, high-performance company. But MBO is goal setting. MBE is getting your business on autopilot. And MBE, the management by exception management style, we talk about five management styles that every manager should know, and these are just two of them. But the MBE is getting things on autopilot. It's refining processes and people as well to be more self-sufficient and more automatic so that the management time can rotate through the company and based on the dashboard and the anomalies and changes that it sees, dig down into problem and improvement opportunities, but the managers are not spending all their time working in the business. They're spending more of their time working on the business to improve things that have leverage for all customers and for the business, as opposed to working with individual customers, which should be very systematized over time. So you want to see PAMS, which is short for Performance, Accountability, and Merit System. And M-O-T-L means more on that later. So you'll see that acronym a few times to point out the fact that we're making some forward references here. And you'll need to uh, see some of those other videos to understand these um, concepts completely. Um, but autopilot is very powerful because it frees management time to do this working on the business instead of in the business, uh, which is a, uh, a very important concept. We actually integrate it into the MBO process, uh, which is a proprietary enhancement that we created in the MBO process. Um, everything that repeats must be systematized. You will not grow a business quickly and be able to scale it and get into high growth mode until you have done that systemization. And good dashboards enable that. And now they also enable setting MBOs, i.e. goals, it's a very special type of goal, but the goals can be set for improvements in the KPIs that are in the dashboard. So this allows you to set goals that improve the business as opposed to just do the business. And that abstraction is a very powerful concept that gets your managers focused on higher value work that will pay off and be leveraged uh, over time. So now we're going to talk about why every company needs a dashboard. People do not understand how powerful and how many advantages there are to dashboards. And I could literally spend an hour on this and we probably wouldn't get to all the advantages because they're very subtle, they're philosophical, and until you start using them, you probably won't appreciate how powerful they are. But there's a very wise management axiom that you can't ever improve what you don't measure. So that's an underlying foundational principle uh, in the use of dashboards and why you need them. Thank <laughs> you.